Okay, we're joined by uh, Cincinnati's uh, Jeremiah Davenport. Uh, we'll open up to questions for Jeremiah. Just please use the raise hand feature in the Zoom uh, or drop a note in chat if you're unable to do that. Uh, and we'll try to take your questions uh, as many as we can. Standing by for questions. Start with Justin Williams from The Athletic, please. Jeremiah, before the those last six minutes where things kind of got crazy, what do you feel like was the difference for you guys building that big 20-point lead? Oh, well, well, you know, it was, it was a lot of turnovers we had, but uh, we tried to keep it calm, you know, some calls didn't go our way, but it's going to be like that. So, yeah. We're going to next to Joe Daneman, please. Uh, Jeremiah, obviously you guys, um, it's it's a one game at a time kind of thing, but you all know what you have to do down there. How, how important was it um, to get this first step taken care of so you guys can keep going after what you want to get done? Very important. Like you said, you know, we got a mission, you know. So when you go back to the hotel, you know, the coach is going to, Give us a scout report, you know, do what we gotta do for for tomorrow and so on, you know. So that's basically it. Just just keep a focus, you know, head on and just keep doing what we're doing. Take the next one from Chad Brindell, please. Jeremiah, were you surprised that you kept finding yourself pretty wide open for that corner three? Uh felt like seemed like after you hit a couple, you found a rhythm there and Teammates just kept feeding it to you. Yeah, uh, no, nah, I wasn't surprised. You know, when you were a shooter, you know, you expect to to be open like that, or get get shots that you feel me create for other um, <clears throat> your other teammates, stuff like that. So, no, nah, I wasn't really surprised. You know, I'm a bit, I'm doing I've, I've been doing it all season, so you know, it wasn't nothing new to me. Go back to Justin Williams, please. JD coach always jokes about how you guys can't seem to help but play close games. You know, obviously, they turned up the pressure those those last six minutes. But what was it that you guys struggled with that let them crawl back into it? Uh, it was the press. You know, us being able to to beat the press. You know, obviously, you guys saw it. So I feel like that was the main problem. But we're gonna be gonna be ready for that. You know, here come next game. So yeah, that's our main focus. Okay, anything further for Jeremiah, please? Go back to Joe Daneman. Hey, Jeremiah, I'm just curious, how much of a, a, a reset buzz button is the uh, conference tournament for you guys? Obviously, it's been a, uh, a season that you didn't win as many games as you wanted to. Um, there's been some pauses, but here you go with this three-game chance to get to where you want to go. So how much of like a reset button do you think this is for this team to, to kind of refresh and, and go after it? Yeah, uh, you know, coming in the tournament time, tournament time, you know, it's – it's, it's not the regular season no more. You know, this is this is big time basketball. This is where, you know, you advance to the to the chip to the national. So it's it's it's, it's a whole nother level. You know, that's how I put it. It's a whole nother level, you know, basketball. Okay, take the next one from Steve Lansdale, please. How much different was your game plan on either end of the floor compared to when you met in Dallas with SMU not having two of its bigs today? Um, it was the same. You know, it was based on basically like how we play, how we approach the game for real. So it wasn't it wasn't too many on the bigs or nothing. It's just how we perform, you know, how we gonna come out and tackle, you know, because obviously we beat them before. So and you guys saw it today, you know, attack, 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 attack. That's what we did. Okay, we can take two more. We'll go to Joe Daneman, and then we'll finish with Chad Brendel, please. Actually, you can go straight to Chad. I think I hit my uh, hand by accident, Chuck. No problem. Chad, you're up. JD, how much of a, a lift was it this week getting uh, David back and, and seeing him back around the team with the guys? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's good, man. Dave, my guy, he, he's everybody guy. So for him to come back, you know, to help us, you know, that was it's a really big help you know, going, advancing to the tournament, you know, so, yeah, we happy. We're really happy. Also, how did you guys learn he was coming back, or when, how did you find out? 
uh, you know, he told us, you know, it was, that was pretty much it. He told us, came back and told us, so, yeah. We'll take the last one from Justin Williams, please. JD, you guys got, you're a sophomore, Mike is a sophomore, a few freshmen on this team, guys who haven't played in a conference tournament yet. It didn't seem to impact you guys early in the game. How, how do you feel like you guys have adjusted to that with such a young team? Oh, uh, well, having three sophomores on the team, you know, it was, it was nothing new, you know. We come here every day to work, so that's what we do for real. No matter if, if, if we knew to something or not, the, the game is still being played how, how it's supposed to be played, so. Jeremiah, thank you. We'll let you get back to the locker room. Appreciate you giving us a few minutes today. Hey, we welcome JD. JD. Hang on, guys. That chair is soaking wet. <laughs> chair is soaked. Right. Probably have the coaches go first normally, but it's all right. Uh, Coach, thanks for joining. Coach Brandon, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the win. Get your, uh, your opening thoughts on the game, then we'll open up to questions, please. We're really proud of our guys' effort. You know, obviously the end is the end, but I'm not going to – we're in tournament play, so that really doesn't matter. The you know, bottom line is you got to advance. And, you know, SMU, I thought, really came out, really played well at the beginning of the game. You know, had a, had a, a purpose about them, and uh, I was concerned with that because they're obviously well-coached and talented. We were able to sustain uh, our effort and be able to kind of take their punch. We switched to zone. I thought that was pretty effective. We were able to get some stops and get out in transition. I thought our guys did a good job on 50-50 balls overall. And, you know, obviously when you build a lead like that, um, you know, you, you know we're, we're young and we didn't handle the pressure very well. And uh, there's really nothing you can run at that point. You just kind of got to go make plays without trapping and, and things like that. And obviously a lot, of, a lot of physical contact was going on out there. So, uh, you know, I told the guys we'll get better. Uh, either in Indianapolis during the time off we have or next year in terms of our, uh, what happened at the end of this game, we got to move on to Wichita immediately. Okay, same deal for questions. Just use the raise hand feature if you can in the chat. Uh, we'll start with uh, Chad Rendell from Bearcat Journal, please. Coach, in a, in a radio studio today, not at Kings Island. Um, did, did you – kind of get a feel that that you were going to be able to push tempo a little bit in this game with Mikey and, and Micah and and kind of make it an up and down game against a team that hadn't played in 32 days well you know Che, we, we tempo wise we're the fastest offensive team in the league so it's what we do uh you know we haven't we've been a little more selective probably in the last few games but um you know you're, you're not going to slow Mike Mike Saunders down even if you want to uh, which I don't want to and you're not going to slow down those guys running, getting in the break. And my thing is now we're making better decisions. We're playing off two feet. We're getting to the line. Our assist totals are high. So we're just when we do that in transition, we're we're being better in it. Uh, how had that you know anything to do with SMU's layoff? I mean, I, I didn't factor that in. I'm sure there was some effect to that because I know we went under a layoff as well. So you know, I, I respect that, but I, I didn't just make any game planning based on it. Go next to Sam Blum of the Dallas Morning News, please. Yeah, you just mentioned, obviously, you guys went through that layoff. You know, I'm curious, um, you know, when you guys went on that that long run, I mean, do, would you kind of see the effects of it having, you know, obviously coached through a layoff and, would, would you know, when SMU kind of struggled there, was that, you think that was kind of part of that? Did I, did I see the, the effects of? You know, they're, they're maybe not playing for over a month, you know, when you guys went I, I think, yeah, yeah, no, certainly. I think that, you know, some guys probably missed some shots and weren't right. It's just, the game's a rhythm sport. It's not a you know, bang your head, you know, it's a rhythm sport. So, uh, they were probably out of rhythm because of that. I don't think there's any question. Uh, uh, I, I know what that looks like and feels like. And, you know, it's just, you know, unfortunately, in tournament play, you don't get a chance to get your legs back underneath you. Take the next one from Dan Trotora, please. Coach, just what you could say about uh, playing in such a unique year and how you've navigated through it and how it's affected uh, coaching and affected the student athletes. And, and then what you can say about gutting this one out against a team that was off for more than a month. Well, Dan, you have to have a long time, a long time to answer that question because it's just been, I mean, uh, what our young men have gone through. I mean, it's, it's one of the one of the guys who mentioned who had opted out and came back mentioned to me, confinement almost. Like, you know, afterwards they go back and they're kind of confined. And you know, think about being in your house for the quarantine during the beginning of the pandemic this time last year, but not having your family around. Um, it, you just walk a little bit in their shoes. Uh, what they're doing right now is just unbelievable. I mean, I, what we walked in the locker room, I thought there was going to be a bunch of stuff for them. I mean, I, I think the NCAA should step up and give these guys. I mean, it's, it's amazing what they're doing to represent our league, represent our university, and represent the NCAA. And 
Uh, I got a tremendous amount of respect for it and gratitude to them. Uh, I'm not confined, my assistants aren't confined, uh, but our student athletes are. And uh, from a coaching standpoint, I've had to adjust a great deal uh, in terms of our approach and, and the way we do things, uh, which in turn affects process, effect, affects uh, outcome. Uh, but I'm not the only one going through it. Everybody in the country is. So I do think veteran teams have an advantage, uh, but I do like the way we're playing right now. But it's, uh, it's something that uh, is indescribable. We don't have a playbook for it. I can use all the sayings and all everything, the new norm, all that stuff. The bottom line is our young men should be given a ton of credit across the country for the mental focus and toughness that they've showed during this. We'll take the next one from Justin Williams, please, from the Athletic. Coach, you mentioned that switching to zone, was that a product of them not being a, a big three-point shooting team, or was it more specifically something you saw with the way they were playing to start the game? I think it's a strength of ours. I think they are a good three-point shooting team. I think they're an outstanding offensive basketball team. It's just, you know, the zone is turning to be a strength of ours here late in the season. It was, it was again tonight. Take the next one from Brent Young, please. Hey, Coach. Uh, 19 assists on 23 made buckets and 44% from long range. How do you think the offense is looking right now? You know, I think the offense is continuing getting better. You know, that's what we do. We share the ball. You know, most of our games are high assist games. I like to get lower turnover games to make us get the opportunity to get more shots up. That's who we are. You know, we're not an ISO team. We're not a one-on-one -on -one team. We're a share it. You know, make shot, dribble, penetrate, open the floor up. Uh, and when we don't do that, we don't cut and we don't look very good. The teams that, that have more of a, you know, a positionless offense like we do, uh, they look good when they're moving the ball and there's player movement, ball movement. And you don't look very good at all when there's not because, you know, we're not running a play every time down. We're just kind of putting them in spots and letting them use their talents and abilities to play off each other. And we got, we play basically play four guards. Davenport's basically a guard. And, um, you know, I, I like the way the guys are playing. They're playing with a tremendous amount of confidence and they're playing with a tremendous amount of, amount of trust right now, Brent, in, um, in each other. Okay, let me take a couple more. We'll go to Steve Lansdale next, and then uh, Justin Williams. Steve, you're up. Uh, Coach, I was wondering what you thought of sort of the game within the game, the matchup between Saunders and Kendrick Davis. Well, I mean, obviously Kendrick Davis is a guy who's been doing it for years in the league. Mike's, you know, a freshman. Um, you know, Kendrick is, you know, leads the league in assist to turnover ratio, assist at 35 points. This is the third guard that's had 30 some points on us here this season, in the last month of the season. Mike Saunders is going to be, he'll be that guy as the years go on. I think he's got a chance to be one of the elite point guards in the league. He's certainly a guy that's playing with a tremendous amount of confidence, and uh, we have a tremendous amount of confidence in him. So uh, I know what he can do, and I, you know, I would put him up against anybody in the league, but you know, Kendrick Davis is an outstanding player and showed it again tonight. Okay, we'll take the last one from Justin Williams, please. But you mentioned those last six minutes, you're not going to put too much stock into it just because being, you know, single elimination everyday tournament. But what can you use from that moment to take into the Wichita State game, knowing that they probably saw it as well? Because you're going to ask me, aren't you? So even though I said that, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, don't, don't hope for fouls. You know, go make plays. Uh, there's no real press offense you can do. There's just run around trapping. You got to get the ball in the middle of the floor. And attack and you know be strong with the basketball and attack and make good decisions and bottom line is we didn't really do that but we have a lot more to prepare for based on that I mean which all states can impress us that's what they do and that's what they do and we got to be ready for it but the fact that it took place in the last six minutes of the game and we've already played 20 plus games and been in the sleep two years now I don't think that those six minutes are going to change anybody's game plans. Coach Bannon congratulations on the win and advancing we'll see you back tomorrow. Thanks guys. Okay, we go now to SMU. Uh, we're joined by head coach Tim Jankovic. Uh, coach, we just get your uh, opening thoughts on the on the game, please. Actually, you may need to un just unmute that computer if we can. If uh, yeah, there. yeah, there. I, if, believe it or not, I, I actually know how to unmute. <laughs> right. it took me about four weeks, but I figured it out. Great. Uh, just your opening thoughts on the game, please, and we'll open up to questions. Well, I, here, um, and and I've been out. A, a, we've been out. We haven't played since February, I was out before that. I haven't had a chance and I would like to, in, in the day and age right now where we recognize a lot of people and we honor them and we wear pins and buttons and everything, uh, th this is, 
I, I would like to at least recognize two of my many incredible mentors who I loved and who were beloved and who were two of the great coaches in my mind of our time. Uh, and that is uh, Boyd Grant, who I worked for first. At, uh, he, he was an amazing coach at Fresno State and Colorado State, as good a coach I've ever seen. And he passed this year. And Eddie Sutton, who I, who I was fortunate enough to work for, loved, and he passed. And, and so I just wanted to recognize those people because they, this has been such a rough year and uh, we've lost two of the great coaches. But as far as the game today, um, you know, there's nothing, there's, there's nothing worse in my mind than a coach after they lose sounding like they're making excuses. Um, nobody wants to hear it. And certainly, first of all, I, I, I give Cincinnati much credit. They played, they've been playing great. They've, they've been, you know, they had a rough start and, and they just, uh, the last eight, nine, 10 games have, have been a much improved. I knew it'd be an incredibly difficult opponent but, but for me, uh, I, you know, this, this, is, this, is sur this has been a surreal year, but the last five or so weeks have been beyond belief. And I'm so proud that our guys could even to play it to a one possession game. I mean, if you knew what was going on behind the scene, we haven't played a game since February 8th. We paused for 15 days, meaning no one could practice, no one could see each other. And when we did come back last week, I think it was Thursday, we, we start out practice with five after they'd been off for 15 days. And then it was six and seven. We have a whole bunch of guys in the game. We have one that practiced yesterday for the first time, two that practiced the day before that. We started playing five on five three days ago after about 18 days pause or 15. So I have never in my lifetime gone into a game where I had less idea of whether we could even you know, compete. And so I'm, I'm proud. We, we were, and then losing Ferran early in the game that, that, you know, just everything that goes wrong. We didn't have your, we didn't have Jamar. Now we don't have Ferran. Uh, and I'm certainly not saying had it all been right, we'd have won this game. I never want to say that, but I, what I am trying to say is I feel awful for this team because this is a team that had played itself onto the national bubble uh, and then we get shut down for eight games. This team really wanted a chance to decide our fate in those games. And this team really wanted a chance, the real team, our real team wanted a chance to come to the conference tournament. And unfortunately, our real team didn't come to the tournament. Again, I don't mean had they, it had gone different. That's, that's terrible to say, who knows? I just know that we wish the SMU basketball team that we had in place and was playing very well would have been able to make this trip. And I wish that team would have been able to play those eight games that just went away. And, and behind the scenes, I won't bore everybody, but it was, it was the most amazing daily phone call, news, more news, more news. And I give our guys a lot of credit for hanging in and playing like that with really – I mean, we had practices that looked like YMCA practices. So I am very proud of our guys. Never feels good to lose, but I got to give them a lot of credit. Okay, we'll take questions now. Again, just use the raise hand feature again or shoot a note in the chat. Uh, we'll start with Sam Blum from the Dallas Morning News, please. You answered a lot of the questions I was going to ask, but, um, you know, just during that long run that, that Cincinnati kind of put together, what was, I mean, do you feel like that was a kind of a factor of the rust? Because there were a lot of turnovers of that they're kind of during you know, that stretch, I mean, how do you kind of look at, I guess, that in comparison to the way you guys finished this game, you know, maybe putting that all together? Well, that changed the game. That forced us, you know, we, we played really – well, we closed the half, you know, we, we made some turnovers and we really had a hard time scoring against the zone for that period. It kind of broke the game a little, you know, broke it open to five, six, seven, seven, I think, at the half. And then the second half, you know – really broke up we couldn't we couldn't hardly get a basket um and once the game broke open we 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 knew we're without Ferran. we're we, we got limited minutes with isaiah we tyson's got uh, had a 10 minute limit and he hadn't practiced but once in 20 days uh we don't have your we're, we're, we're all right in front of our face we're, we're just 
literally going on the fly. And, and, and that's what's so crazy. When the conference tournament, you've covered all these things, but we became a different team here. The team here is not the team that we've had. Guys are out of position. Heck, we're not even having positions. We're, we knew we had to change the game. Uh, and we did. And so we went small. We got really aggressive offensively and uh, just simplified it down, played four guards a lot of the time, obviously pressed. And so getting back in the game was the product of partly changing, like we became a completely different team the way we're playing and also just their effort. You know, the effort was, was fantastic. And particularly with, you know, we're not in March condition, but I thought they fought through it and, and uh, that part was great, but, but we didn't play well. I mean, we, you know, we, we don't even look close to ourselves. I knew we wouldn't, but we certainly played hard, lots of defensive breakdowns, partly because, you know, the, the, the normal rotation is not even in the game. I mean, so we tried to a little bit of zone. It wasn't great. You know, that was hoping to come in here and maybe steal a whole, a good number of possessions had we advanced and even today to try to try to be a little bit awkward to play against, but we hadn't had enough time. We hadn't had everybody in practice to get really tight with it, but uh, we did make some progress, but wasn't good enough. Sam, did you have a follow-up as well? We, I was just going to ask kind of about, um, you know, just look at looking ahead, obviously, uh, you know, obviously if Kendrick who just put up 35 points, what do you kind of expect in terms of some of this, these seniors who, uh, you know, I don't know what their plan is. Obviously everyone gets another year of eligibility. What, what, what's kind of, the regroup and, you know, next step for this team? Well, the next step for, first of all, is, is you know, we we certainly by the numbers, as I understand them, and I hope it is uh, objective and not subjective, you know, when they pick for the NIT, and of course our goal was not the NIT, but if you look at our numbers, I think going in our net, our net rating was certainly a, the, a number that is should be, uh, given an invitation. They're also supposedly look at your defensive efficiency. I think we're 33rd. We're 15th in the country in field goal percentage defense. We're like, I don't know, 39 to 40 something in offensive efficiency. So all those numbers with our real team should put us into postseason, albeit not the NCAA tournament. So you know, I hope we don't get punished that we didn't get to play from February till now. I hope we're not punished for that. We could certainly use a few more days of practice to get in shape and to get a little bit more. I don't know if we can ever get back totally to who we are, but we'd sure like a chance. So by the numbers, if I'm fairly optimistic, unless there's something that I, that I don't really know, but whenever our season is over, we'll do what every other team in America is going to do right now. And that's have meetings with everybody and see, you know, what their feelings are, what they want to do. Uh, I believe there'll be by far not close more movement this year across college basketball, because I believe the transfer rule will, will come to play. At least that's what everyone's telling me that everyone will be able to transfer uh, or at least people that haven't transferred will, will be able to transfer and play right away. So, you know, we already have like a thousand a year, <laughs> in division one. And so this is going to be, this will be the year I, in, in my mind of, uh, of, of, of a form of free agency in, in college basketball. So we'll meet with our guys. We'll see, you know, where they stand, where we stand and uh, make those determinations. And then of course, that's, that's what's going to affect your recruiting and uh, what, what kind of things you do in the spring. Okay, we'll take the next one from Steve Lansdale, please. Yeah, you know, Tim, considering the fact that you haven't really practiced for a month and the guys haven't been around each other, how would you characterize Kendrick Davis's performance today? Pretty incredible, you know, really incredible. Um, and it's, you know, it's a combination of the, how, how can you, that, that's a great, how can you do that? You know, how can you have not played a game since February the 8th? How can you have had a team pause for 15 days where nobody could be in the gym with somebody else. That's what a pause is. Can't see a coach, can't see another player. You can be in the gym by yourself, but that's, come on, that's not, you know, these aren't pickup games. This is high level college basketball, but 
in order to do that, in order to pull off a game like that, you got to have incredible toughness. You got to have incredible heart and incredible work ethic that allows you to keep your skills at, at that level. And you got to have incredible talent to do all those things. And so that, you know, it would have been an amazing performance anyway, you know, in normal circumstances, but given ours, it was phenomenal. We'll take the next one from Dan Tortora, please. Coach, I know you touched on it, obviously, at the beginning in your opening address, but just what this season has done for you as a coach, what it's taught you. I've spoken with other coaches across the country that said it changed how you have to coach, how you have to approach really everything. So what can you say from your point of view as being one of the coaches that probably had, I don't want to call it penalized, but had to wait the longest amount of time in between games and, and lose so much for something out of your control? Yeah, it, it was an incredible penalty. And yet I, I'm not, it doesn't feel like to be angry or pointing fingers because nobody's fault. It's just, it's, you know, so there's, so there's none of that. Um, for me, I just, I just feel so badly. And I said early on, I figured out that this is going to be, I didn't know it finished like this with, you know, no one could have predicted eight games. I mean, that, that was beyond any imagination, eight in a row. But, but, but it was apparent to me early on that this was going to be one for the ages. And I, I kind of gave in early on in my own, so I didn't have to fight it mentally, that this is going to be an amazing journey of history. And I think that's the way I tried to approach it. And knowing that, like, for the players, it doesn't count anyway. Had it, had it counted for the players, I would, I would really have struggled with this season. But knowing it's kind of a freebie and it allows them to still try to play but not lose their status or, el or eligibility or anything like that, you know, I look at it as just as one of the one of the most amazing daily, hourly, weekly uh, pile of bad news, phone calls, rearrangement, uh, isolation. I mean, it, it really has been phenomenal. And so I didn't learn anything I'm going to take forward because I hope we never have anything like this again. But what I do know I take from it is I take my hat off to all the players in the country, ours especially, I'm you know obviously closer to them, because what they've been put through is amazing. It really is. And then double down on our guys, all the different protocols and all the frustrations. And then you add the fact that we kept getting ready to play a game and they said, no, you don't get to do it. And I don't know how many times you can keep getting told no and still keep that passion. And I saw that passion in our guys today. They tried so hard to win, but we're so far away from being the team that we were. How could we be? I mean, how, how could they? I, I, I can't expect it. And I don't want to be the coach excusing a loss, but there's no way we could expect, you know, them to look anything like the team that we were. And especially when you look at all the guys that were, you know, we're also rostered down to add to the lack of practice and all that. So I'm proud of them. It's been an incredible uh, test of handling adversity on a daily and an hourly basis. And I hope that anything we did learn, we don't ever have to do again. And we're never talking about this again. Thank you, Coach. My best moving forward. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll take the last one from Mark Norris from Fox 4, please. Hi, Coach. Uh, ultimately, this is a bottom line business. The bottom line is this is now going to be the fourth season where you haven't made the tournament, and your boss has said the expectation is postseason. So my question would be, do you expect to be the head coach of this program next year? Well, I do. I'd say it was three because nobody went to postseason last year. So it would be three. And if you look back, um, you know, year, year one, we were, I think, you know, we obviously went to the tournament year two, we were firmly in the tournament. We were on probation with three less scholarships because of the nine that we lost. So we started the season with 10 players and we had put ourselves, I forget what our net was. We were way up there. We had three top 15 wins and without question, we were an NCAA team. And then, 
Shake got hurt. Dre got hurt. Ever got hurt. We were down to seven players, including not our best two. And in, and on top of that, three uh, three for for the scholarship reduction for um, for that. And then then the next year, uh, Dre was hurt again. Everett was hurt again. We were down three scholarships. So we we lived those two years. So I think it's you know a year two we were. A, probably we were threatening top 25 that's the kind of team we were and then we had three injuries on top of three scholarships so I don't I don't know if that's fair to judge on that last year we were a postseason team of some kind I'm sure whether we were going to make the NCAA tournament we'd had to had a great showing here in Fort Worth but we were in position to do that a lot of people had told us that we were a postseason NIT so uh you know I'm the probation coach and so if that counts, then, you know, if, if the expectation is we should have gone all those years through pro probation, then, you know, then we've done less. If it's, you know, look at what we've done with all the things against us, you know, how many people have been put in this position? Nobody's ever had a nine scholarship reduction. Uh, I feel like we've done a great job because, you know, we've managed to, to, to come out of this this year. We we're you know, right there threatening the NCAA tournament again. And, and we deserve by the numbers to be a postseason tournament of come, some kind. But again, out of our control, we don't get to play eight games at, or practice. So uh, I feel good about a lot of the things. I'm very proud of, of what we've been able to do with more adversity than, you know, I've done this for 37 years and we've had more adversity in the last four than we've had the other 33 that I think that I've been coaching. So I'm proud of the things under the circumstances. I know a lot of people, you know, pub, they don't, they don't dig into it. They really don't even know what you're going through. You mentioned it is a bottom line. They look at a score and sometimes that's all they know, but uh, you know, people on the inside, they understand what's, what's really going on and uh, what the challenges are. Coach Jankovic, thanks for giving us a few minutes. Appreciate it. And best of luck. Thank you. Hey, Chuck, I've got uh, I'm... Okay, we're joined now by uh, Kendrick Davis from SMU. Uh, 35 points, 27 in the second half today. Uh, we'll open up to questions uh, first with Sam Blum, please. Yeah, Kendrick, obviously, I mean, just how did you feel like this team kind of came out and played today? Obviously, you looked really ready to go. Um, just how would you kind of assess this game and, and what your feelings are now that it's it's over? Man, I was proud of how we played in the second half. I thought first half, maybe not for me, but I thought our guys was rusty. I mean, a lot of them had COVID. I mean, I think about four or five guys that played only practiced for like three days. And I thought you could tell they couldn't remember the plays. Um, just we didn't have that, that step to us. And even when we had the lead, it still didn't feel like We've been playing forever. It felt like this day one, like the new season. But, um, man, I'm proud of how we fought at the end. Wish we didn't get down by so much to fight like that. But, um, I mean, we just we just went out swinging, man. We knew after not playing a month, we couldn't dictate if the shots was going to go in. All we can dictate was our effort, and I thought we played hard. You know, obviously you guys were right there, you know, February 8th, uh, last time you, you played before today, right there on the bubble. And and now obviously that's, you know, you come back and, and that's not going to be the case uh, making the tournament. How do you kind of look at this season? Do you guys feel like it was, I mean, do you kind of look at it just as a, you know, you know kind of throw your hands up? I mean, how do you look at this season? Uh, this one, you just got to flush down the drain. I mean, just call it what it is. Uh, I think we could have played for a second. Oh, first, we didn't get a chance to play at all. Like, I think we only played, how I many, 17 games, 16? Played 17 or 16 games the whole year. And it was – played 16 games the whole year, and it wasn't never a rhythm. Either one team get COVID and they counts on us, or we get COVID and they counts on – or we counts on them. So, I mean, it's just a season you just – you just thankful to have back because, I mean, 16 games, it ain't – that ain't a season, really. So, I mean, we just thankful we got to play basketball, but I mean, it's just one you just got to flush and just get ready for a real one. Last real one, real quick. Do you, I mean, do you plan on coming back? Do you know what your plans are? <laughs> uh, I ain't, I haven't thought about it, honestly. I'm, I'm be honest with you. Have not thought about it. Uh, I still 
you got to sit down with Coach Jank and figure out what's the best um, route for me. So uh, that's about it. I got to sit down with my family, Coach Jank, and we'll go from there. Okay, we'll take the next one from Steve Lansdale, please. Yeah, Kendrick, when uh, Cincinnati had that run in the middle of the game and extended the lead to well into double digits, how were you and your teammates, being as shorthanded as you are, how were you able to find that extra gear to close the gap toward the end there? Uh, I knew as being the best player on the floor, it was gonna, I was going to have to win or die by me. So um, I just stepped my aggressiveness up a level. Um, I didn't want to put it on my teammates, given the fact that they haven't been in the gym as much. They have not um, had a rhythm as much. So as me being the best player, I just put it on my shoulder that we was going to win or die with me. We'll go next to Mark Norris, please. Hey there. Uh, you guys had one of the longest pauses in the country due to the uh, COVID outbreaks you guys had. Uh, do you feel like your teammates and the staff at SMU took the COVID protocol seriously? And would you have done anything different with the way you feel like the team uh, trying to stay safe from the virus? Of course we took it seriously. Um, if you want to be really honest, after the game, after we played East Carolina, one of their players tested positive. So a player that played a bunch of minutes. So, I mean, we, we could have got it from them, who knows? But I mean, we took it seriously as it can be. I mean, outbreak started after another program we played had an outbreak. So, I mean, not just putting it all on the program, but who knows? Like, we don't know. But, I mean, of course we took it serious. It's our health um, before basketball. So, I mean, of course we took it serious. It's just one of them – one of them just this season. It's just 2021-2020. I mean, it's COVID. Hopefully we get through it and get ready for next year. Go next to Dan Tortora, please. Kendrick, just looking back on this, I know you said that, you know, you were going to win or, or die with you, 35 points in 38 minutes. I mean, half of the points from the team came from you. Just what you can say about the emotion that you had to put the team on your back after having to wait so long. And then secondly, just what you think the life of a student athlete has been this year, having lived it yourself through one of the toughest times in the pandemic. Man, it's been tough, man. Like, I could speak for me, but I know school, I, I love school, but basketball keeps me motivated for school. And when basketball was took away, it was tough. It was tough waking up knowing I don't have practice today. I just got school and I can get in the gym, but who knows when we're going to play. And then, like, the rules of getting in the gym, you got a certain time you can get in. You don't have a, really a rebounder because of the COVID outbreak. So you like, it's just, it was crazy. I mean, most guys will tell you like, I go to school so I can stay eligible and then I fall in love with school. But I mean, it was almost like, we never thought we would play again. I mean, it got to the point where it was like, like uh, whatever, whatever we, we just thankful just to play, win, lose a draw. We were just thankful just to, just to play a game. And I mean, we thought we was clicking. We won two on the road, on the road, and then we just got shut down. So it was a heartbreaker. And um, man, I I just want to put the, I just wanted to put all the load on me. I thought I should have been player of the year, and I wanted to come out and show that, and um, just showcase that we was gonna fight to the end. Kendrick, thanks for giving us a few minutes. Congratulations on a great performance today. Thanks.